So there you have it. Here we have the first inhabitants of the Americas, deep underwater. And these early Americans are moving, but they have no brains. But we now go to a live report from the mid Ediacaran, where we have a couple of new developments. So, Corythosaurus, could you please tell us what animal you are with now? This animal you're with certainly doesn't seem to know which way he's going. Well, you're right. This Cnidarian here, he certainly doesn't seem to have any idea where he's going. He doesn't have a brain, and he also, he doesn't have a front. See, this animal is a radially symmetrical animal. He has no front, no back, and so therefore, it doesn't really matter which way he's going. All directions are more or less the same. Are all of the animals in the mid Ediacaran period wandering around as aimlessly as that one? Ah, look at this. This animal has a clear front. It is always moving with the same part of its body going forward. And this has lots of repercussions. As it modifies its body to accommodate this, it is no longer radially symmetrical, but rather bilaterally symmetrical. And since this one end, the front end, is always moving forward, now sensory structures begin to accumulate there. This now is becoming a true head. And with the head, with its sensory structures, collections of nerve cells are forming the first brain. So here we have a new type of animal, a worm, which is bilaterally symmetrical and has a head which contains a brain. Great news! So finally, here in the Americas, we have citizens which possess brains. Can you tell me what else they have? Do they have hearts and blood vessels and kidneys and lungs and gills and all of those other systems we find in complex animals? Well, this worm in particular, no. No, it doesn't have much more than this. See, it's very, very small. Many worms are microscopic. And this one happens to be a flat worm. It has no heart or blood vessels. It has no gills or lungs. It has no excretory system. In fact, simply because it is so flat, all of its cells can get their nutrients, their gases, and eliminate their waste through diffusion. And so these very simple, small, flat worms are the simplest of the bilateral animals. And they get by without many of the systems found in higher animals because they are so flat.